one of the developments we had to uh, create was uh, was how I would get all this information while on air. And what we did, uh, we put a, a, a editor on one side of me who handled incoming news material from our own correspondents who didn't get on air but were calling in material from the press wires. And uh, uh, this was a young lady, lady named Levin who uh, was very good. Uh, and uh, and uh, she was on one side, and she would uh, clip uh, news wires and, and write up the top of what it was about, the basic subject, and pile them up on my desk so that I could grab them and, and read them when I had a moment and absorb that in my mind, ready to pour that into my knowledge of what was going on. And on my other side, I had a communications consultant, Neil Strasser, who, uh, who was in touch with the control room. And he passed me a little notes of where we should go next. So I had this, this information coming to me from either side. And, and that we developed actually on the first day of the convention uh, after we had thought that I would get all this information by my earphones. But I found that getting the information by earphones, I couldn't listen to what was going on at the podium. It turned out that uh, the anchor person, if permitted to be uh, to permitted to do so, if he isn't or she isn't bothered by a lot of incoming information, uh, is the only person who really knows what's going on at a convention. None of the people who are telling you what you should be covering know the producer, the directors, associate producers, people on the floor, very rarely can be of much help to you in what's going on because they're not paying attention to what's going on. The director and producer are paying attention to where they're going to go next. They're watching a great bank of pictures up there brought to all the cameras we've got around town and on the floor and elsewhere, and they're looking at those and deciding where they want to go next for a pictorial storyline, but not the textual storyline. Well, I had that argument right up to 1980. Uh, the, the producer would have somebody down on the floor who thought he or she had a good story, and frequently they did have a good story, uh, from a, a delegate who had something to say about general current of events. But the problem was that it didn't fit with what was going on at the moment on the floor, the running story. It would, it would just be dropped in there with no uh, context, and, and, uh, and I would fight it off. I'd say, not now, not now, tell them not now, you know. And because I was listening to what's going on on the floor. And, uh, uh, and this was a constant source of uh, difficulty between me and the producer, uh, and also with my colleagues on the floor, all of whom, uh, at one time or another, accused me of being a lens hog, a microphone hog, because I wouldn't go to them the instant that they had somebody they wanted to talk to. And I understand, if I'd been on the floor, I'd have felt the same way very difficult for them to operate because the person they had standing by could, would be an important governor or senator who wanted to sit down again and himself listen to the debate or get back into the internal debate in his, in his delegation. And uh, they couldn't hold on to him forever. And they were about to lose the opportunity to do an in, what might be a very interesting interview with the person. So this was a major problem of, of the flow of the story always, and I suppose it would still be so if there were a story to tell in the conventions today, which there's not. They're only shows now, they're not real conventions.